Internet. It's a red light stop kick. In fact, I'm in a parking lot, but don't don't tell anybody. We just got back from camp uh, a couple of days ago, and the question always comes up at camp, especially with the counselors and this sort of thing. Why did God put the tree in the midst of the garden? I mean, didn't he know that Adam and Eve would eat from it and that everything would start dying? Uh, and the normal answer that's given to that question is this, that God had to give Adam and Eve a choice. Otherwise, they couldn't love him. They wouldn't have the opportunity to love uh, th that we have to have a choice to love and prove uh, our love. Now, that is a ridiculous answer on the one hand, because in the resurrection, we won't have the choice to sin or not sin. I mean, all we can do is serve God. The, the death and sin will be no more and there won't be the option. And yet, will we love God in the resurrection? I mean, absolutely. Uh, we'll love him perfectly. In fact, we'll finally be so set free from sin that will be able to love them. Now, I'd like to suggest to you, and this is really following Luther's thinking about the tree in the garden, that uh, that the tree is there not for an exercise of their love, but for an exercise of faith. You see, faith is the confidence and the hope for, or, or the knowledge, really, in this case, of things not seen. And so the Lord had to speak to Adam and Eve of something that they couldn't see. And what was that? Well, everywhere they looked, they saw life, but they didn't see death at all. There was death nowhere in all of creation. And so the Lord says to Adam and Eve, if you eat it on the day that you eat it, excuse me, on the day that you eat it, you will surely die. What's death? Adam and Eve don't know, but they have to trust the word of God. So that Adam and Eve would go to that tree and worship. This is how Luther speaks of it. The tree of the knowledge of, of good and evil in the garden is the first church where they would go and they would believe God's word. On the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. And they would keep his word by not eating the fruit. Uh, it's amazing how God's law then was so easy to keep. It was, a, uh, it was just a not doing of something. Now, look what happens. Uh, after Adam and Eve do eat the fruit, then the thing that is unseen becomes seen. Death is everywhere. De death is, uh, the trees are dying, the sun is dying, Adam and Eve and their children are dying, death is everywhere. And now what do we believe by faith? What's hidden from us? Well, that's the word of life. So that now, whereas Adam and Eve had to trust God, on the day you eat of it, you will surely die. Now we trust God, all who believe in me will not die. They will pass from, from death to life. Those who die, who do believe in me and die will live forever, says Jesus. So that our faith is now in the promise of life, in the promise of forgiveness, and the promise of holiness. That's what switched when Adam and Eve uh, ate the fruit. Uh, now the thing that we believe is the good news of the gospel, not the, the dangerous thing of the law. So I would put that before you as a thought for why God put the tree there. It was so that Adam and Eve could worship him, could believe his word, and could keep it. It's the same reason why Jesus establishes the church today. So we can go and hear the preaching of the word and we can believe it and we can live. Parking lot dropkick.